Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Stefano from Soto Zen and in this video I will show you how to create this interesting shockwave demolition effect. We will use some basic rigid body simulation and a wave deform modifier in order to get this interesting effect that you can use in different situations. So if you like the idea Let's see how to do this. Let's get started. Okay, let's start by creating shift a mesh mm, with a cylinder. We want just six uh, sides. Let's scale this on the z axis, something like this. Control A to apply the scale and then G and Z to move it above the floor ground here. So now because I need a lot of these elements what I will do is just to shift D, duplicate and then X to move it alongside here. And once I position it, this copy I can just repeat the last operation pressing shift and R and I can in this way easily place down a lot of these elements and with the same idea I can B box select each one of them and this time I can shift D move them on the Y but because I need to place them a little bit on precise way something like that I cannot now shift R because it doesn't work because I I make more than one operation to place the new copies now that I have these two rows of element I can A select them all together shift D Y and move on the Y axis and now I can again repeat the last operation so now I end up with this some sort of pavement okay now we have all these elements they are inside this first uh, collection that we have by default on our blender starting scene we can call this uh, pavement I can create a new collection where we will add simple plane uh, let me undo this before doing this I want to center it is not important to be precise but I like to have all my elements more in the center of my scene just to keep things more clear. Another thing that I like to do, but it's totally optional, I like to work with this uh, random color option when I have a lot of same kind of elements on my scene, I prefer to see them better separated in this way. This is just a visualization option, it doesn't affect the rendering option at all, of course. So we have our element in place. What is left to do now is to convert this object into a rigid body. It has to be an active rigid body object, but we can leave all the other parameters here as they are by default. Only now I want to propagate these properties to all the other elements. So I select this uh, element that I made rigid body. Then I select with A all the other element in my scene. And here under object rigid body, I choose copy from active. After a few moments, we will have as you can see, all our elements rigid body as well. In fact, if we now try and play our animation, 
we can see all the elements falling down together. And to avoid this, we need some sort of collision object to stop this from happening. And we will use a simple plane that we can scale until we have the size. And I want to place this plane floor object just a little bit under all the elements in order that they are not colliding when I start this simulation. So now I want once again Ctrl A to apply the scale and then make it rigid body passive. If I now play the simulation again it seems like nothing is happening but they are trying to fall down but they just uh, stop because they are in, the, in contact with this ground object here. Essentially passive rigid body means that it will collide with all the other elements in our simulation scene but it will not be affected by the forces like uh, gravity for example. So it will stay still during the simulation. What we need now? We need this kind of shock wave element to, to destroy our pavement here, all these elements that we placed on our scene. So as you probably guessed, we will use the modifier, the fourth modifier wave. But if we now play this, the animation, nothing is going to happen and let me before we continue I want to uncheck the simulation this rigid body world option in this way you can see that the playback of my animation is faster and I can leave this unchecked we don't need to have all the calculation from the rigid bodies uh, anytime so uh, as I was saying if I now play my simulation, nothing is happening to this plane object, even if we add this wave modifier to it. And that's because in order to alter the topology of this element, we need to increase its polygon resolution. To do this, we enter edit mode, and then we, with the right click, we can choose this subdivide option. And in this subdivide menu, we can choose how many times we want to subdivide this object. For some reason, as you can see, when we reach 10 subdivision, we cannot add any other subdivision. The only way to fix this is to enter by typing the number that you need. So for example, I think something like 50 subdivision is a good starting point, maybe even 60. Let's go back to object mode and now if we hide our pavement collection in order to focus only on this uh, floor object, if we play you can see the effect of the wave modifier. But we want to have something a little bit different and we have a lot of parameters here to play with. And the first one is the starting position on the Y axis, I want to move this on the border here, something like that. And then I want to uncheck the X axis and I want to uncheck the cyclic. Oh, I think I have to fix this, sorry. Okay, this is, so now I have this, you can see in this way it's circular I uncheck the X motion property here and I have only the wave on the Y direction and then now I can move back the starting point of my wave and now I have this I can increase a little bit it, the height then we can increase also a little bit the speed something like this and also I like to play with this falloff value this um, allow us to yeah as you can see the shock wave start and then it 
has some kind of fall off that it turns off slowly the height of our wave so it is based on distance you can see 50 meters let's try 100 meters a little bit too much maybe 80 yes and probably the height a bit more okay let's say we are happy with this shock wave that we have let's unhide our um, pavement collection and now if we turn on again our rigid body world here if we try you can see that something weird is happening and this is because of the behavior of our plane object of the shape of our plane object that is um, altered by the wave modifier and under its rigid body properties we have to um, set some parameters in the right way the first thing we want to change is this collision shape parameter we want to switch from convex hull to mesh you can see still it doesn't work and that's because it, it is still not taking into consideration what's happening you have to check this deforming option that you have here that now i have enabled it but i think that by default is on base so if you have this situation you first want to switch from base to deform and then if you need to you also have to check this deforming option and if i get it right what it does it tells blender to take into consideration the actual shape of our plane object after it's deformed by our wave so if we play now our simulation we start to have something very interesting here uh, let's try to somehow improve this even even more the first thing that i don't like is that you see that this first row are pushed by the by the simulation and they are sliding all in this way and we can avoid this simply adding another collision object so shift a this time cube and I want to scale it only on the x and y axis so i hold the shift and z to avoid the scale on the z axis and now i simply adjust this sort of uh, bounding box that i am making here to see it better i can switch its viewport display properties from texture to wireframe this object will only prevent the sliding of all our elements so ctrl a apply the scale and let's enter edit mode and in phase selection mode i want to get rid of these two faces here and back in object mode I can scale it a little bit on the x-axis until um, all my pavement elements are inside this uh, border. Let's also scale it a little bit on the z-axis and once again apply the scale. We want to make it um, rigid body itself and switch to passive and we want to change the shape collision mode to mesh and now you can see that we have our shockwave effect what we can do is to um, to prevent the sliding even more we can go under the rigid body properties for our floor object and under 
surface response, we can increase the friction value to 1. And another thing that I like to change often is the overall speed of the simulation of our rigid body world because I don't like this kind of um, slow motion falling down of these elements that uh, most of the time I get with this default speed at 1 so let's try to put it to 2 um, probably I want also to increase a little bit this sub step per frame value this essentially means how many times each frame Blender will calculate the position and the uh, collision of all the elements involved in our simulation. So I think that 20 will be some kind of improvement for sure. So let's try again our simulation. And if we play now our simulation, we can see our end result working quite nicely. We can also hide this second collection here in order to focus better only on the pavement elements. So in order to recap, we create this single element, we duplicate a lot of time in order to have this sort of pavement and then we made all these elements uh, active rigid bodies. Then we create this floor object. We add a wave modifier to it with some settings in order to create this one direction wave. And then we made this object um, a rigid body as well, this time passive with this source deform and deforming option enabled. And then we get this nice shock wave effect. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please leave a like or a comment. If you have any kind of question, I will be more than happy to try my best to uh, answer to them. Also remember to follow on my main channel, SotoZen, where you can see a lot of my 3D animation and works. And why not visit my Patreon page and consider subscribing to my Patreon program if you want to support me even more. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon next time with another great tutorial. Ciao.